God raised the man from Jaws, sent him to Zaria. Now we are privileged to have him in the city of Abuja. Koinonia with Jesus' joy and a resounding celebration. Please help me invite to this August pulpit, Apostle Joshua Selma. Jesus' name, let angels 
angels prostrate for bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Thank you for everyone gathered here and all who are following across the nations of the earth. We return thanks. We return thanks. You are a wonder-walking God. We return thanks. Lord, I pray that you will move in a mighty way in our midst tonight. Bring glory to the name of Jesus. And we vow as always that you will remain glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Let me sincerely express my appreciation. Um, time may not allow me to start, but um, I, was, I was truly overwhelmed necessarily a surprise truly but broken again to see the hand of God when I saw I got to hear that all the overflows were filled and there were people all across the street and I saw the joy the expectation listen there are some things that men cannot do don't be deceived there are certain results that are not within the realm of men. We like to take credit for these kinds of things, but it is unto the king, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. I sincerely appreciate every one of you, your excellencies, members of parliament, um, captains of industry, ministers of the gospel, I honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. I just want to conserve time so that we can do much. I particularly want to honor um, His Excellency Anyim Pius Anyim. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I truly honor you. We do not take your presence here for granted. Thank you. Hallelujah. I just want to share a few things and then we will pray by way of introduction this is what God is doing in this city and we're honored to be part of his program uh, 
I just allow me to perform a function. I have many goals in my life by the grace of God. And I set one of those goals strangely as a very little boy. And the goal was that one day, as God allows, that through my life, the nations in my lifetime and in their lifetime will be able to stand and celebrate my wonderful parents. I prayed and I asked God to grant me that wish as one of my life goals. And I'm truly honored that among the many goals, I would be able to achieve that today. I truly am honored to have my biological parents, my father, my mother, and let me request that's my father that's my mother ladies and gentlemen please honor my parents honor my parents alongside my siblings my entire family members please honor them thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you ma god bless you please be seated It is an honor for me that they are able to see this in their lifetime to the glory of the name of the Lord hallelujah Acts chapter 2 from verse 14 this was the day of Pentecost Acts chapter 2 and verse 14 the Spirit of God had fallen upon a group of people who had been waiting 40 days with Jesus and 10 days alone and the Bible records that that event was so dramatic people thought they were under the influence of new wine and then the Bible says from verse 14 it says but Peter standing up with the 11 he lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem be it known unto you and hearken to my words 15 it says for these are not drunken as he supposed seeing that it is but the third hour of the day verse 16 hallelujah but this is that this is that which was spoken by the prophet long before this day there were prophets that spoke about this extraordinary manifestation that a time would come when they would experience the move of the spirit on earth and peter stood up and said this that you see this is that our gathering tonight is based on what I believe is the fulfillment of three prophecies in the Bible number one Joel chapter 2 please from verse 28 I'd like you to please be patient as we walk through a few prophecies we are people of prophecy Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 we're reading down to 32 please help us media Joel, Joel chapter 2 from verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterwards prophet joel will say that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men will see visions and also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days i will pour out my spirit the bible says i will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke 31 the sun shall be turned into darkness the moon into blood before the terrible the great and the terrible day of the lord verse 32 now he says and it shall come to pass that whosoever calls upon the name of the lord he shall be delivered for in mount zion and in jerusalem shall be deliverance as the lord had said and in the remnant whom the lord shall call now read that scripture it says deliverance will come from two places number one mount zion and then number two there is a remnant 
that the Lord shall call. Praise the name of the Lord. Second prophecy, Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house, he says, shall be exalted above other mountains. And he says, it shall be exalted above the hills and people or nations shall flow to it. Verse 2. That they will say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. The God of Jacob is a God of encounters. It was a name that came out of Genesis 32. The encounter that Jacob had at Luz that will later be called Peniel. Hallelujah. And they will say, please keep that scripture. It says, he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Last scripture, Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. From verse 16, Acts chapter 26. This was Paul before King Agrippa giving them the basis for his passion, his drive, and his apostolic work. He said, this was his encounter with the Lord Jesus, but rise and stand upon your feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness. Both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I shall appear unto you. We're reading to verse 18. 17 now. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Last verse, verse 18. The assignment is very clear. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So we are people of prophecy. We're not just, this is not just an advocacy of men. This is not just a mundane pursuit, an ambitious pursuit of zealous people. Koinonia is an apostolic and a prophetic global family of sincere, passionate, transformed, and empowered believers with a mission to replicate the fullness of God's life on earth, to be agents that create the platform for encounters, for fellowship, for transformation, and even for revival. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14 says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, The love of God and the fellowship. That's where the word koinonia comes from. The participation, the sharing together. It says, Let it abide with you. Let it be with you all. Very quickly before we pray tonight, the first time I've been in this city for longer than most people would know because most of my travels have to be routed through this city and the first time that I had an impression to take the walk to this city was 2013 but whilst having my retreat and through a series of other encounters we knew that this was not the moment and the next time I would begin to have that prompting of the Spirit was three years ago. And the Spirit of the Lord began to lead me and began to open my eyes to that which He would be doing from this city, this nation, this continent. And it was on the strength of that move and like Paul, 
I wouldn't be negligent to this heavenly call. And this is why we are gathered today. We have a very straightforward mandate. And the Lord asked me while I prayed and prepared, he says to announce this mandate. We're not here just for ministry. There is a very definite spiritual assignment for which he's brought us by his spirit. Six of them has revealed to me. Please follow me as we just express this and then we'll pray. Because this is what the Lord is going to be confirming all through our stay and time as we build and labor. And this will also help you and give clarity so that we can release our faith appropriately to benefit from that which God is doing. Number one, our first mandate in this city and in this season is to help actualize the global harvest of souls. The first reason why he has sent me here is to stand in partnership alongside with the men and women of God, the vessels of God in this city already doing great things for the kingdom to see to it that this global harvest that we have so spoken about that it becomes a reality. Acts chapter 2 please from verse 36. Media help us will run through a few scriptures. It's important that we, we establish our convictions upon the integrity of the word of God. Therefore, this was Paul speaking now after the Holy Ghost came upon them. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. We're reading to verse 39. Next verse, please. Now, when they heard this, the Bible says they were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? These were confused people in need of salvation. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be ye baptized, every one of you, no exception, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I like verse 39. Please read with me if you can see it projected. Ready? Read. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many. The promise of salvation and the ministry of the Spirit, the global harvest is a mission and a promise to everyone. There are about 7.2 or they're about getting to 8 billion people on the earth. And as far as we know, my statistics may not be accurate, but it's just a little over 2 billion people that we have as professing Christians. And we're not talking of vetting this by the standard of God's word. Are we together? That means we have well over 6 or so billion people who are yet to call upon the name of the Lord. And I assure you, until that happens, Christ will not return. The narrative we have is that Christ will return soon, and that is true. But he's not going to return carelessly. We are people of doctrine. The Bible states very clearly the conditions that must be met for his return. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. It does not have to be received. But there must be a witness that it was taken across the nations of the earth. Then and only then, the Bible says, the end will come. The church is a major determining factor as far as the return of Christ is concerned. So scripture says we can look forward to and we can even hasten the day of his coming. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16. We'll read from verse 27. This is the doctrinal basis for why we are here. Do you know why I'm taking my time to share this? Because unfortunately we live in a world where the moment people begin to see the supernatural manifestation of God's hand and the investment of God's spirit upon individuals, usually most people do not understand the labor in the spirit that would have brought such dimension of grace. And it is, 
people will easily generalize it and just make it think that it's some fetish or demonic thing. We are defending the grace that has been given because we know what it will do. Praise the Lord. Graces are defended with doctrine, the integrity of God's word. Acts chapter 16, please verse 27. Let's hurry up. Media, please help us. Acts 16 and 27. This was the second incident in scripture where men would have to ask, what do we do? The keeper, this was, this was Paul in prison. When the earthquake came, there was a miracle. And the keeper, someone help me in my screen. This, the keeper of the prison are waking out of his sleep. And the Bible says, seeing the prison doors opened, he drew his sword and wanted to kill himself, the Bible says. And then Peter beckoned on them. And he said, no, 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 we are safe. He cried out with a loud voice. Please, someone, can you help me walk on the screen? I'm not seeing the scripture. Let me have to open the Bible myself. Okay, thank you. He cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm. It says, for we are all here. Next verse, very instructive. The Bible says, he called for a light. And when he had come, let me narrate it very quickly. He said, what shall we do? It was a question when he saw the spectacular hand of God. The jailer came and said, I am in need of of this that you have received and Peter took time to articulate the gospel and the Bible says from that encounter that man and his entire family were saved Romans chapter 10 I think perhaps is the most accurate um, theological presentation of the need the need to get the gospel to the ends of the earth but the need to find men who are hungry and available. Romans chapter 10 from verse 13. Here's what it says. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. That is the law. You cannot be saved just by good intention. You cannot be saved by an inheritance. No, that you came from a good family and then you inherit salvation. No. It says, how then, 14, shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? It's a question. Number two, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Verse three, how shall they hear without a preacher? So it starts with their believing, but that the problem with the believing is their hearing. The problem with their hearing is there is no one to speak in the first place. And then the Bible says that how shall they hear except there is a preacher. Then it says how shall they preach except they be sent. As it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring good tidings, glad tidings of good things. Let me tell you, I truly believe in the name of Jesus Christ that there will be such a move of the spirit that will bring a global harvest a global harvest it is important that men be saved look up please whether we believe it or not i assure you that one day jesus is coming and one day we are going to wrap up the activity upon this earth as much as we know the pandemic has made us to believe that it is easy to bring creation at a standstill within a moment even within a twinkling of an eye but the question now is that we cannot sit and fold our hands and allow people go to hell every day while we keep doing church, we keep playing religion, we keep making a name for ourselves. I tell you in the name of Jesus, the days of celebrity Christianity is over. God is looking for a people who are passionate and serious and committed to see kingdom come more than their reputation. This is not some sarcastic statement. The spirit of grace himself will make it happen. So this is our first mandate. 
the global harvest of souls mandate number two our second mandate in this city and even in this season is equipping and building believers onto stature and maturity through the revelation of God's word part of the principles or the assignment of a true apostolic ministry is to see that believers mature so we equip and build believers onto stature and maturity through the revelation of God's word Matthew chapter 28 please from verse 18 Matthew 28 and verse 18 Jesus gave us what we call theologically the Great Commission and here's what it says many of you have not taken out time to read what Jesus said he didn't just ask us to preach the gospel I read from verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me the word there is exousia authority given to me in heaven and in earth 19 it says go therefore on the strength of that ability and teach nations not just preach teach nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost verse 20 it says teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo if it is true you are committed to doing that i give you a guarantee that my presence will go with you there is a guarantee my power and my presence will go with you whilst you focus on teaching discipling and mentoring nations the only way to attain unto maturity in the body of christ is the exegesis of doctrine discipleship the principle not just not just a denominations approach to Christianity that people are grounded in the truth our spiritual vacillations are an attestation a proof to the fact that we are not grounded challenges sweep believers left right and center and very little things make us to doubt our convictions Paul said I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded are we blessed Ephesians chapter 4 the Bible says from verse 11 it was for this reason Ephesians 4 verse 11 Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus because of the overwhelming desire to mature the church he gave on to some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers we read to verse 14 he says for the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ 13 it says till we all come that means this is a possibility we can come to a state in the spirit called the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ last verse it says that we henceforth be no more children Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the slight of men and cunning craftiness wherein they lie in wait to deceive we have to mature the body Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says they remained and they continued in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer this is the formula that matures believers the exegesis of truth the communication of doctrine so that believers are grounded you can pick at random come you can pick this gentleman from a secular approach now and say for instance this gentleman wants to be a medical doctor there is already a predefined curriculum he does not guess his way around it his assignment is to effectively pass through that system are we together now give him six years give him seven years give him eight years of diligently advancing through that system the end of that advancement is that he will become a doctor there has to be a methodical approach to our maturity the reason why 
there, there is a random approach to Christianity is because the mentorship systems are not defined. They are largely opinionated. They are not based on doctrine. So you cannot guarantee a predictable spiritual outcome. A doctor in University of Joss or ABU for instance and a doctor in Unilag or UI if they come together the variance should not be very wide because it should be a common doctrine that made them doctors a, a common body of knowledge so when a Christian from this region or this place or that place when the variance becomes wide we have to examine the curriculum that was used and largely the curriculum may be based on personalized dealings this is where the tragedy of establishing believers come from personalized dealings are not a biblically approved strategy for discipleship they can be a support system when doctrine is the foundation are we blessed two doctors who have never met still by this example can literally meet for the first time in a theater and not be afraid of one another they trust their competence their competence is not based on their names their competence is based on who taught them and the standard that was used we must raise our standard to a predictable spiritual level if god does not pride in remaining a mystery doctrines systematize our knowledge of God are we true so we must equip believers to mature so that as much as possible the foundations of the Christian faith Hebrews chapter 6 tells us about six pillars that represent the foundation of the Christian faith we may differ in certain approaches personality differences that's that's all right but the foundations that make up the Christian faith there are pillars and if we deviate on those pillars we are no longer Christians are we together this is our second mandate to help support what God is doing within this city and to mature believers you see in this kingdom the message is what gives value to the messenger the messenger is not independently valuable the value of the messenger is the quality of the message that he has received he says this is the message we have heard from the beginning what really makes us powerful is not personality no it is the strength of the message and the dexterity of that message we communicate it with confidence because it did not come from us it only came through us are we together number three very quickly what is our third mandate our third mandate as given by god in this city and in this season is to be instruments of completion and balance this is the third mandate that we have to be instruments of perfection or completion and balance Colossians chapter 1 when you read from verse 28 and 29 please give it to us media Colossians chapter 1 28 and 29 he said whom we preach warning every man and teaching man in all wisdom that we may present every man complete the word perfect there does not just mean mature it means complete in Christ Jesus verse 29 it says for this cause or whereunto I also labor striving striving to reveal dimensions that need to be captured in our experience Acts chapter 2 we'll read verse 20 then we'll go to 27 and 28 Acts chapter 2 from verse 20 did I get that right I beg your pardon Acts chapter 18 Acts chapter 18 from verse 22 
to 28 the Bible talks about a very interesting man please look up very interesting story the Bible says that there was a man and when he had landed at Caesarea he went up and saluted the church and he went down to Antioch 23 the Bible says and after he had spent some time there he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and so on and so forth strengthening the disciples next verse 24 it says there was a certain Jew look up please he was called Apollos he was born at Alexandria notice look at this man's qualification dear servants of the Lord Jesus Christ when you have this kind of man you will almost ordain him immediately this is exactly what we're looking for the Bible called him an eloquent man number one number two he was mighty in scripture number three he came to Ephesus and then the Bible says this man was instructed so he submitted to mentorship he was not a rebel he was instructed in the way of the Lord then the Bible says he was being fervent in spirit and he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord but he knew only the baptism of John imagine that that man's book was the only book you had to read in your life you will be sound but only knowing the baptism of John listen no matter how accurate we are we only see in part and we communicate the parts that we see now the challenge for a very long time is that I think maybe because of our personalities or through our, our limitation in growth and maturity we have mentored people into believing that every dimension out of our sphere is not necessary so we have different varieties of imbalance we have people who are mighty spiritual people but they are poor they are broke they hate influence and they remain in servitude then we have those who aspire to be great they become mighty men captains of industry but they do not believe in the reality of their spirit man their health we have people who ignore leadership and administration and then they are at the lower levels of life we, we have those who love these dimensions but hate God there is need to communicate what the Bible calls the whole counsel of God. Every dimension of God was designed to help you believers into that stature. I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant and do not sustain the requisite level of influence to make kingdom come happen. Are we together so we have many well-intentioned believers they love the Lord they are vibrant spiritually but there are other weightier matters the school fees of their children their life their responsibility as citizens of a territory because they have not been so mentored to appreciate these dimensions as also being spiritual we have people who love God, they go to church, but do not have the intelligence and the mentorship to raise visionary children. And society is the effect of that kind of teaching. There has to be a balanced communication of the whole counsel of God. That it is still spiritual to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, prayer, praying in the Spirit, sound in doctrine, excellent in life you are an agent of transformation you are a visionary person they can go together you don't have to choose one at the expense of the other this happens when we help bring balance now let me say something very quickly it is easy to observe faults it is easy to observe mistakes it is easy to observe that a man of God is limited. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Not everybody is given that office. Just because you observe something wrong does not give you the authorization to talk about it. There are people designated. The same way nobody can just arrest anybody in a society. No. There are people designated and mandated to see to it that this happens the challenge is that several people assume judgmental standpoints and everyone is quick to show that this man of God is not teaching this is not doing this right is a very wrong perspective the first requirement 
to be given the grace to correct the body is love not revelation the the zenith of transformation in the kingdom is not knowledge is love and until you can pass the love test not love for god love for men so that when you are communicating truth you communicate truth from the standpoint of love not the standpoint of hatred and sarcasm is god blessing us so our mandate is to help to support these falling dimensions in the body of Christ to help bring balance to the body of Christ that we come to a point of appreciation that no matter how powerful we are the best of us is only an effective member number four what is our fourth mandate our fourth mandate in this city is to demonstrate the reality of the love and the power of God through miracles signs and wonders bringing healings deliverance restoration breakthroughs to men I believe in miracles oh yes I do I believe in signs and wonders I believe in the supernatural I believe that God is able to superimpose into the affairs of men and bring divine possibilities into this our world christianity started supernaturally it is maintained supernaturally if it ever culminates as far as our work on earth is concerned it will be supernatural to ignore the supernatural for whatever reason is a faulty understanding we must embrace the supernatural acts chapter 2 and verse 22 the bible tells us that jesus as our high priest and pattern man it says that Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. Signs and wonders are a system of attestation that God brings upon a man and upon a people that they truly are sent from him. Please look up. Let me tell you sincerely, people are going through real problems. The challenges that plague people are real. And whilst it is true that our primary purpose for seeking God is not things, because we love him, that's why we want to be like him. However, in the economy of God, there is always a provision that whilst you seek him, there are tokens, there are consolations to your Christian experience. There are proofs that show that it pays to serve Jesus. In fact, here's how the Bible puts it. Oh, taste and see. It didn't just say believe alone. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Isaiah 61, the Messianic prophecy from verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to to three the spirit of the Lord he said is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound we're reading to verse 3 verse 2 says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord all by the anointing and the day of vengeance of our God all by the anointing to comfort those who mourn not just by skills of empathy it takes the anointing to comfort those who mourn next verse verse 3 it says to appoint unto them that mourn still by the anointing to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified say amen in Matthew chapter 10, please give us verse 1, then we'll go to 7 and 8. Jesus, having mentored the disciples, Matthew chapter 10 from verse 1. The Bible says, when he had called the 12 disciples, he gave them power. Hmm. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Verse 7, 
when he sent us listen when jesus sent us he says as we go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand ladies and gentlemen we were not given just sermons alone it would be dangerous if all we were given was just a sermon verse 8 it says to prove what you just said heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received freely you must give listen in the name of jesus this is a supernatural generation we are men and women who must trust god to host superior dimensions of his power the kind of darkness that looms around the horizon will not the devil will not bow just to stories there needs to be a real display of the superiority of light over darkness I cried and I prayed and I made a covenant with God I said Lord grant by your grace that no man has to see me twice to be impacted once is enough because I read in my Bible there were hardly times when people had to meet Jesus twice if you met him once that was the end of it and the Bible says looking up to Jesus it calls him the author the model the pattern do you know what it means for all of us here and all the overflows and those following online one dramatic manifestation of the hand of God genuine sign and wonder will preach a thousand messages in one let me tell you this I said this I think while I was preaching in Roger just a few days ago and I made a statement the times that we live in now may not even allow one-on-one -on -one evangelism easily again you can be talking to someone and they can arrest you and say why are you talking to this person maybe you are a terrorist and they can go and investigate you so we need something to happen on earth listen i feel sad for the pandemic and we continue to pray and join forces with government to see that this is exited from our region however the pandemic taught us that it's easy to get the world to listen a virus that did not have publicity a virus that did not have an usher a virus that did not have music people it didn't go through any workers training it came from a small city and forced the whole world to pay attention to it now listen in the midst of that pain read the writings on the wall God is showing us the ease with which the nations can come to their knees. the pride of kings all our intelligence combined the Lord is returning us back to days these things were not parables except we don't believe the Bible that one of these days the Sun will stand still again that one of these days hailstones will come from the heavens again that one of these days manna will come from heaven again listen this is not just some motivation that a preacher is bringing no i believe the bible let god be true and all men liars that in one day 20 dead people come back to life and while you are settling on that testimony god is doing certain things in a city that there will be no other news except jesus glorified jesus exalted i am a student of revival i have studied a bit and i have had the privilege to meet some of the people who were mightily used by god let me tell you this if we believe our talking is going to be the only tool and the only instrument to bring the global harvest I want us to think again our fathers listen please there were times in the history of the church where people like Charles G Finney would walk through cities just praying and suddenly things will begin to break out the world's revival the Azusa Street revival with the one-eyed evangelist William Seymour there has to be a display of the power and the glory of God again. 
if this does not happen I assure you someone will rise and shut the church one day there has to be the jealousy of God revealed among his people one more time that I am still God I believe in miracles I assure you you will not go back home the way you came tonight I believe in miracles I believe in healing I believe that demons can be casted out should be casted out always not once I believe that God can give men speed. I believe that God restores. I believe that time is a concept that is only a mystery in the world of men. God who does not dwell whether in eternity nor we say he dwells in eternity. No, eternity is still time. It's just a summation of infinite dispensations. The realm of God is now. And from that realm, he can manipulate any other thing to square up with the counsel of his will. This is what I believe. This is what this ministry stands for. Hear me, people of God. Hear me, great city of the FCT and our global family. In the name of Jesus, we are stepping into superior dimensions of grace. One of the things that a dear prophet of God told me before he went to be with the Lord he said Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumrall he said do not die with this anointing when your days are coming to an end find young men transfer this grace to them mantles are falling here tonight anointings are falling here tonight Graces are falling here tonight For the kings to arise For revival to return For the kings to be born For revival to return Hallelujah Please listen to me when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me one of the things that happened was that light came from him into me and in a separate encounter he told me he said in every city and in every nation I send you that light that came from me to you there must be people within that region and that territory that that light must come upon I believe in miracles I believe in signs I believe in wonders I believe in the manifestation of the power of God as a revelation that you can look at a man and tell him be lifted whether politically whether in business listen let me tell you this listen let me say this there are veterans in business here veterans in politics can I tell you politicians here please find peace this is not the preacher that will manipulate people for gains. We don't draw people, we make them. There is a grace. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Listen, while it is true that we continue to submit to his majesty in awe, we cannot deny what he has put upon us. It is true and it is for the nations. That you remain at the same level? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. It's impossible. You see, your life is limited by the kind and the dimension of grace that is upon you. It says, thou anointest my head with oil, but I see what is on my head by looking at my cup. It does not anoint the cup. So I look at your cup to know what is on your head. For instance, you see, every mountain is relative to the grace that confronts it.
that in one day all doors open in one day your destiny is shifted to it let me tell you this there is nobody who lives what works human beings are intelligent God built us with intelligence I believe in miracles I believe in miracles I believe in miracles I believe in signs and wonders I believe in supernatural manifestations my brothers and my sisters that while you are thinking about rent God is already planning your house and he can come to you and this is listen this is this is not some motivation it's his hand upon you you've taken away the sorrows away you've given me peace on the I up there's no need to fear cause you're always with me you're my father my everything he's taking the pain and the sorrow away he's given me peace on the night up there's no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father, my everything. Hear me? That you can contact a grace. A grace that can turn your life around. These are not graces that are limited to territories. No, no. It's the workings of the Spirit. Lord, you took my pain away. And then you gave me joy You're my peace, my melody In the center of the storm You gave me a brand new song To sing to you That's why I will lift up my Come on, herald the new season Yeah Yeah in the name of Jesus every door that stands close over your life here right here in the name of Jesus by the God of heaven whom we serve inside all of the overflows across outside on the streets following from everywhere in the name of Jesus that door opens now a father be open in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please sit down we have to pray two more and then we'll pray number five what is the fifth mandate our fifth mandate is to help strengthen the unity of the body of Christ that's one of the things that I believe that God is going to be using us to do in this city that in the kingdom if one gets it right and the rest failed we failed Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 the Bible says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come it says they were gathered together in one accord please say after me in one accord that was the condition for the Holy Ghost to come. Imagine that the Holy Ghost just came on one man and left the rest. No. There was a threshold level of unity. Listen, no matter how spectacular our individual manifestations are, we have not come to the slightest comprehension of the dimension of kingdom come that can happen in our territory when we become a coordinated force. Ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 1 to 7 just write it down for the sake of time the Bible talks about unity unity first Corinthians when you read from verse 12 first Corinthians 12 from verse 12 to 27 
Paul himself was speaking. Let's go there. Let's look at that scripture. 1 Corinthians 12 from verse 12. It says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. 20, verse 13. It says, For by one spirit ye are all baptized into one body, whether ye be Jews or Gentiles, whether ye be born or free, and have been made to drink into one spirit. 14. It says, for the body is not one member, but many. Now, he says, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it not therefore of the body? Next verse. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where will they be hearing? If the whole body were Joshua Selman, where would be the dimensions that came from our fathers in this land and everywhere? Listen, we must trust God to be matured and secured. Two words, matured and secured enough to appreciate and celebrate the diversity in the body without intimidation and with genuine honor. Are we together? The unity of faith. Let me use this opportunity to say this, that by the grace of God, our coming is not some childish advocacy to outshine and to show exclusivity. No, we are students of history and God has helped us by his spirit to attain onto a level of maturity where we come into a city first in honor to the graces and the vessels. Seated here are veterans of the gospel, some of the pastors and leaders here, these are people who have served God for many years with dimensions of grace. There are fathers in this land. This land is not barren of people that God is using. We are only coming as participants and contributors, privileged by grace. So that saying of Saul killed 1,000, David killed... No, 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 no. Let it never be heard from you. Are we together now? Yes. This is not an advocacy to downplay and demean the diligence of the men and the women of God in this city. It is true that we operate at different levels of graces. But let me tell you this. Every single man who calls upon the name of the Lord sincerely and is laboring in word and doctrine is deserving of honor anywhere in this city and anywhere in this nation. Do not be part of people who downplay the relevance. It is a difficult thing to bear the burden of the name of the Lord. There are people who have, who have sacrificed their health, their families. The average believer may never know what an average man of God goes through to see to it that the name of Jesus is lifted. Please hear me. We are a people of honor. I'm saying this because of some of the great things that have happened. Chances are that when you see crowds, all the overflows fill down outside the roadside. These are the kinds of, when you see this kind of scenery, the next thing is we paint this celebrity mindset, Joshua Selman. Not so. We are dead enough to allow the church rise beyond our reputation. Believe me, if I had my way, if I have a way of hiding so you don't see my face and just hear my voice, I will be more than delighted to. Listen, let me tell you this. I'm, I'm being open like this so that you see that this, thank God for the excellence, but we're not acting here. This is a sincere communication of the life and the power of God to see kingdom come. Until we love the body more than our individual achievements. The man who is talking to you is not a failure. I have seen things that most people may not see in their lifetime. I tell you with all due respect and humility, God has honored me beyond my wildest imagination. So this is not from a standpoint of weakness and sarcasm. But do not make the mistake of Esther. While she was enjoying the palace, she forgot that the reason why she was in the palace was for others. And Mordecai warned her, and said they may finish us yes soon they will discover you're a jew and don't you think you will be spared remember somebody left that position for you to come and esther said ah let me come back to my senses and focus on the assignment rather than my office
if I perish, let the office perish, but let the assignment continue. Is God helping us here? I'm saying this because there are many younger ministers scattered around coming to draw inspiration and I pray that you don't draw a negative inspiration. We need to trust God to tone down our arrogance as a generation. We insult fathers, we insult everybody just because some of them may not have seen the light to the degree we have seen. It is no license. Revelation that does not produce humility is eating of the tree of good and evil. Hallelujah. Anywhere you see a father of faith in this nation, honor them. Some of us may probably be in, we come from backgrounds that are very conservative. Now God lifts you and gives you a voice and you see everybody and ignore them. No, honor them sincerely. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Are we together? The unity of the body. There are few denominations have not preached it. And sometimes, doctrinally speaking, I would have back-to-back -back ministrations and the doctrinal concepts of the denominations may vary so wide. Yet I have prayed and said, Lord, grant me the grace to maintain my spiritual convictions and yet have the flexibility to navigate through the body and still be a blessing. If the whole world listened to only me, I would destroy the world. You will think the world would be a better place listening to only me. That's the deception that has brought down great people. No. So hear me. In as much as Koinonia is the platform here, let me tell you, my heart is more than this ministry. My heart is kingdom. Kingdom. I love the kingdom more than Koinonia. I will give up koinonia a thousand times so that the kingdom will be advanced this is not acting this is true if it means me coming down from the pulpit and never preaching again if that is the condition for the kingdom to advance then this will be my last sermon i love god that much and i love his body that much this must be our passion someday if christ tarries no matter what we achieve and no matter what we do we're going to be lying down lifeless there used to be an old hymn that says fading away like the stars of the morning you still remember it it says thus will we pass from the earth and its toiling only to be remembered by what we have done press for excellence maximize the dimension of the spirit committed to you let us excel as far as our assignment is given but in doing so, while you rise, let there be a space in your heart for the body. Is the body rising Why I rise? Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instrument of peace. So we have an assignment that pastors can again hug themselves and say, I was blessed by your message. And not go and listen to it in secret and come out and act like I've not followed. No, 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 no. That we can celebrate one another and say that miracle i saw it what a mighty manifestation of the hand of god we must be secured and confident enough that someone can be organizing a crusade and a pastor who may not even be close to him can say i'm paying for 50 buses just tell the pastor a man of god who loves god and loves kingdom has done this i'm not looking for any repeat any applause on stage once it is kingdom come and it is sincere 
men of God we are men of God but we are men we must manage the men so that God will be glorified the unity of the body of Christ is important he says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you heal the sick not when you do all the things you do can I tell you this let me give you an assignment my dear people of God now you are connected to this vision make up your mind that in the name of Jesus you will be part of the agents let's start from tonight that promote peace honor men of God if you have to talk let it be honorable if it's not honorable pray rather than talking it is such a blessing for a man of God to see a text message from someone who is not even his member to say just to let you know you are doing a great work we are benefactors of your obedience please keep at it we are praying for you men of God are men they are just men who were helped by God to serve his purposes are we together yes this for me is one of the biggest assignment it is my desire to see the time when sincere people who are doing great things for God can stand and will let the nation know again that the church is not a nuisance to civilization our hearts and our desire is to see the nations worship listen listen right now make up your mind that it does not have to be your pastor alone to honor that person if that person comes upon the name of the Lord some of you have neighbors some of you have churches close to where you live trust God for grace and one day surprise them you can buy a bag of rice and just take it to an unknown man of God what for I'm not used to this you tell him it's a new season God is doing something new in this. Don't be surprised if the man of God is suspicious and afraid. We have been wounded many times. So what church do you belong? It's not necessary. We call upon the name of the Lord and we have discerned that you love Jesus. This is our contribution to your efficiency. And we watch the wonder working power of Jesus in this city. No matter how anointed we are, divided we fall hallelujah number six what is our sixth mandate in this city our sixth mandate is to help become a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and national transformation this is the sixth mandate that we have come with to this city a bridge of hope for visionary leadership and national transformation and i'm so honored and blessed to have veterans our fathers in politics and government they are members of parliament people here from the presidency the senate so many honorable members just very few of them were honored i'm aware and i apologize we truly honor you and it's simply an attestation to the grace in acts chapter 17 and verse 6 they call the certain people these that turn the world upside down there is a level of visionary leadership and national transformation the church is not supposed to end its impact just within members we must move beyond the border of church and invent by the Spirit of God a formula that is able to bless all and sundry regardless of religious affiliation regardless of political affiliation until we introduce a dimension of god that our sociology can relate to they have a right to think we're a nuisance in daniel chapter 2 when you read from verse 46 to 49 the bible tells us about daniel and his friends 
it says then king nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshiped daniel imagine that level of leadership and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders unto him 47 watch a very big lesson here the king answered unto daniel and said of a truth it is that your god is the god of gods and the lord of kings a revealer of secrets seeing thou couldest reveal this secret 48 it says then the king made daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler of the whole province of babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of babylon so christians can go this far next verse 49 then daniel requested of the king now this scripture every time i read it i am amazed look the level of honor that happened to a man in one moment yet he never talked about it he requested of the king he said if i stand alone i need support systems of like-minded believers therefore king let me use my influence now in leadership appoint for me shadrach meshach and abednego over the affairs of the province of babylon he says but daniel sat in the gate of the king what a leader we must trust god for grace to stand in partnership with veterans of government to restore visionary leadership we must change that narrative about africa that we are just a people who are out to get historically we've been a people deprived and when you come from a foundation of the of deprivation there is there is an economic and sociological rehabilitation that must happen to your mind otherwise when you access power you will view power from the lens of your pain this is what is happening it doesn't mean that the leaders are evil people are sincere but sincerity is not the only seed for transformation it takes strategic intelligence not just from a sociological standpoint we must import intelligence that is not affordable in the world of men for as long as we keep praying in tongues alone and just fasting and falling down in church alone and it ends there there are dimensions of spiritual reality we may not be able to capture but I look forward to times where people will love God so much in the parliaments they will come up with policies they would come up with ideas our country can work our regions can work our continent can work it only takes an allowance and let me tell you this this is the reason why God has granted us grace he said I set you above nations kings not only to uproot but to build to plant when you plant a thing is because you want it to grow so they that be planted in the house of God there should be growth they should flourish in the courts of our God hallelujah this is one of the reasons why we don't just preach alone we have been able to help well for the first phase the school of ministry and I trust that God will help us to partner with very visionary bodies to help rehabilitate people not just complain and say our young people are dying we have to come up with policies more than gifts policies a gift does not change transformation is what really really changes there are many of us here we have this vision but that impetus the drive the limit of our influence should not just be pulpit alone a true apostolic grace is not even a preaching grace a true apostolic grace is a governmental grace titus 1 verse 1 comes from the word apostolos a sent one an envoy a communicator and a defender of a government the true assignment of the apostolic is territorial to coordinate the boundary of god's program per dispensation And we'll pray in intercession we'll pray as we help God will grant us grace to be able to build not just a people who are prayerful not just a people who are coming to church alone but people who can translate spiritual laws into wisdom keys and principles that the nation can be blessed by 
don't just sit down expecting what will Nigeria give me and we are angry insulting government now I'm not justifying we have our different kinds of leadership but believing sitting down and being entitled to just say people will come and change us and bless us is a dream that will never come to pass but we must trust God for visionary people who can rise that we should we will restore meritocracy back to our system that people who are deserving are truly honored in business in governance in career the education regardless of tribal affiliation and whatever kind of sentiment this is that if we fail in this then we have failed if we fail in this and we make a name we have still failed if we fail in this and buy houses we have failed if we fail in this and go around the nations we have failed but if you do not have any of these things I mentioned and you achieve this you won if Christ tarries let us do our best to give the generations that are coming what we probably did not have the privilege to receive rather than complaining and insulting the national anthem of this country says that the labor of our heroes past it says that it shall never be in vain very powerful oh god of creation direct our noble cause guide our leaders right help our youth the truth to know listen in love and honesty to grow and live in just and true the result great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice This is church. This is why we are here. If there was no cause, we will not be here. Why am I saying this? Because being part of the vision, you must connect with understanding. Not just sympathy and loyalty to a man because of what is trending. I assure you, the journey will not always be just smiling. There are times you will have to engage. It's a journey that will require courage. It's a journey that will require strength. People like new things. People like what trends. It's human, but we must sustain the stamina and the staying power to be focused, to be visionary. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our mandate in this city. There are 3.2 million people there about demographically speaking in this city if we cannot influence 300,000 people with this ideology we have failed 10% is the minimum standard of influence yes sir you cannot change a society if you do not influence that much people this is not about church this is not about membership this is about transferring an ideology that is superior to a people to correct their understanding, correct their paradigm, and produce results that glorify Christ, bless society, and better the lives of people. So there will be a combination of spirituality, signs and wonders. There will be dimensions that will come from the economy because you see the end time project kingdom come project can never be be fought just from the standpoint of the supernatural alone there are people who will come from an economic standpoint there are people who will come from a governmental standpoint there are people who will come from a career standpoint my charge to us therefore is that whilst i am honored honored beyond measure for your support your participation and for coming to open up your heart and be part of this vision 
I want you to know that more than a man, first look up to Jesus, then focus on the vision, then you may look at the man. The man is only a privileged point man, but the agenda is bigger than a man. The assignment always is that we will decrease so that he will increase. To decrease does not mean to be small. To decrease means to give him space so that he will be seen. Are we together? What then is your own role? Let me tell you what your role is in this vision. Number one, your first role Connecting to this vision is prayer. Prayer. No matter how anointed God has helped us to be, we need prayer. Prayer for strength. Prayer for stamina. Prayer for longevity. Prayer for health. Number two, what is your role? Your participation and your connection to the vision. Genuine connection. Connection is a covenant. In the days that follow, we we'll have the opportunity to teach on covenant. Covenant was a strategy that was designed to ensure consistency in man, regardless of his emotional limitations. Covenant is an invention of the intelligence of God. Because men are emotional. Our faculties of perception according to God, the highest faculty of perception should be discernment, then reasoning based on laws, then emotions. If emotions have a toll on us, the danger is that we will never have the same power to push visions to their fruition. So we start so many things, businesses, ministries, churches, organizations, and we're excited, the euphoria of the new. But a covenant consciousness is what gives you the staying power even when emotions fail. Man is an emotional being. That's why anything that God intends to last, he does not trust it until there is a covenant that binds it. Whether it is marriage, whether it is service, anything that has to do with kingdom advance, relationships, if there is no covenant that binds it, you cannot secure God's attention because human beings are emotional. This ministry, the work of the ministry is by covenant, not feelings. You will wake up one day and it will look like someone sat on you. But the covenant will drive past your emotions and your pain. The king's business requires haste. So your participation in this ministry should be based on covenant. The revelation that there is an agenda bigger than the man. The agenda is bigger than the man. Your third role that you have to play is partnership. Partnership here does not necessarily just talk of money alone. God has brought a number of you people of influence. Partnership is any contribution that comes from your influence, from your access, that can help ease up the work can help promote kingdom come is partnership when Nehemiah was about to build the wall he obtained permission from the king and that granted him access the permission and the materials for the building and he made that building complete I believe in influence and I believe that some of you who are people of influence that God has brought here is for a reason and for a time like this everything finds its credence when it is connected to kingdom come there is nothing on its own that really blesses the blessing from it is the degree to which it is connected to kingdom come money access influence everything finally what is your role in this vision to be an extension of the vision to others there are six local governments in this region the fct and 80 percent of the activities happen within the abuja municipal area 
every other region must be able to experience the hand of God. The over 3.2 million people thereabout, it is important that they are reached and that we become extensions of this vision. There are people who need to be saved. There are people who need to be healed. There are people who need to be delivered. We must be agents, extensions of this vision. There are people who God needs to single them out and lift them. We must be able to bring them to the place of the anointing where they can encounter the grace that makes this happen. If this happens, then there is a partnership between us. But for now, we are going to pray. Three things and then we are done tonight. The first is you are going to pray for me and you are going to pray for the vision. Second, I'm going to pray for you and I will speak over your life. Third, is that we are going to leave this place with a strong conviction that as we gather week in, week out, already, you know, I was humbled and I said, my God, I thought we got one of the largest venues in this city we did our best to make sure the overflows, there are three overflows down, a little space outside. And when I came, I said, what in the world is going on here? And one of you here sent me a text and said, Apostle, you know what that means? I said, well, I understand. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll look for where. I, I don't know how we're going to do it, but God is going to grant grace. Because um, when I saw the people outside, literally everywhere, it's like, all the overflows down to the basement all across everywhere people can just stand and look inside here across the road no man has the power on his own to do this it is God and it is because the feast is ready this is only day one so in the days that come you see the kind of thing that can happen it will happen. It's a grace that makes it happen. It's called anakazo. It's a compelling power of the spirit. It's not pride. It's the truth. It says all nations will flow to it. This is because of the lockdown. That several people from other nations could not make it. Africa, Europe, the US. And so they are following online. This is what happened under a very limited, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we had to constrain and constrain and constrain. Don't just celebrate it for me. It is my prayer that every church in this city, that our meetings and there are people to be saved, there are people to be healed. There's no need for empty pews. That businesses will no longer be empty. That, that our schools will no longer be empty. We have about 3.2 or so million people here. There is still space for more. The king's business requires haste. Are we together now? Praise the name of the Lord. Now this is how we're going to do it. Let me pray for you first. And then you pray and speak over my life. I believe in your prayer. I respect the grace that everybody carries. I know that you call me a man of God, but it takes one who is with God to discern who a man of God is. And it is foolishness to trivialize the grace that you carry. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Because I know that even though this is an inaugural service, and I'm sorry we had to cut so many things in an attempt to still keep compliance. Ideally, it would have been that at least we'll give a few people room to just say one or two things. Please forgive, forgive all our limitations. But I assure you that if your feet step this ground this night, by the God of heaven, you will not return the same. Is it all right if I make an altar call? I believe in Jesus. And I know there are people here who are not saved. Please look at me. I'll make an altar call and then I'll pray. We'll just pray for the sick and we're done. 
Um, if you're outside, don't come in, please. All the overflows, when, when I make the altar call, you just move to your projector screen. Those by the roadside, just stand where you are and wave your hands. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? Now, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, very, very quickly, you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. I came and I saw the mighty move of God and this that is about to happen. I truly need Jesus. I want to start afresh or oh, I'm rededicating my life. No matter where you are, if you are in this auditorium around the gallery, please, whilst we're clapping, I'd like you to leave that place very quickly and come and stand here. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Come to Jesus. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Please stand. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our heart on you. Celebrate them as they come. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. All those who are coming overflow, one, two, three, the basement, outside, by the roadside, those following, those of you who are watching me by way of the internet from the US to UK, Asia, Africa, it's time to make it right with Jesus Christ. It's my joy and honor, what a harvest, the very first day, what a harvest. Listen to me. Many of you are making this decision for the first time. Some of you are rededicating your lives. It doesn't matter. No man condemns you. He gives you room to start afresh with him again. Please make sure you don't interrupt His Excellency protocol. Let there be people there, please, who are. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at me. My dear people, everybody, ah, there will be such an outpouring in this place right now. Don't think it will be this quiet. Let me just finish the altar call. Praise the name of the Lord. This is Koinonia. Those of you who are out here, please look at me. Hold on, please. You know, there are some of you, maybe just one minute, just to reorient our minds. There are some of us here who just come out for altar call, but we are not intending to be serious with God. God wants to help us, but we must be ready to be serious with God. Are we together? The grace is supplied, but we must take advantage of it. I thank you, all of you, for coming. This is, this is a mighty move of the Spirit. I'd like you to lift your right hand. All of the overflows those following online you're following from your house you can just go on your knees or lift it up to Jesus please say this loud and clear from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem let it be from the depth of your heart those outside even if you are by the roadside say it you can still be saved say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight I have heard your word I, have heard your word. I believe in you that you are the son of God, the son of God. I, believe I believe 
that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I receive eternal life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that my sins are forgiven. I receive the life of God from today and forever. I go forward ever and backward never. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we present to you the ones Jesus died for. Thank you because you are the only one who is able to save unto the uttermost. I pray according to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that a new beginning starts for you. Amen. Receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Amen. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray that from today you are built, you are established in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pray for you, but there are two of you just standing here. The power of God is going to come on you. I'm seeing that evil spirit must go. This is koinonia. Huh? So uh, that's one there. I command that spirit to go now. In the name of Jesus, help them. If it is true that it's Jesus that you came to meet him, no, you shouldn't go back the same. So there will be the first fruit. Every spirit, those in front here, if there is any spirit that ties you down, right now I speak as one sent that you leave their destinies now and forever. Now and forever. In the name of Jesus, out of their lives, out of their destinies. I declare you are free, free forever. Now, very quickly, please look at me, all of you. You will be back shortly, but I want you to follow the counselor. He's lifting a placard there. Please just follow them very quickly. There will be a group of people who will just follow up on you, and then you will join the service. Let's appreciate them as they go. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? I think you should pray for me first. Because if I pray for you, you will not be able to pray for me. Is that, is that, a, good, is that a good deal? I want to do something prophetic. If you will allow me. This is what I want to do. When you are done praying for me, I'm going to invite, respectfully speaking, Reverend Godwin Abba. He will just come and coordinate the prayer for me. Once you are done, I want to do something prophetic. Thank you. I will plead. I know this was not part of the plan, but I will plead with His Excellency. I will plead with him to come and release a grace for governance. Yeah. Hallelujah. I will also plead with Dr. Stanel, Stanley to just release a grace for entrepreneurship and business. Yeah. Hallelujah. I will plead with our father prof. As a professor, he will release grace for those who are in the academia. Is, is that all right? And then I will also plead with um, Reverend, Reverend Abba again, just by way of, of uh, being that he's, he's a direct son to the principal authorities, you know, within this land. At least you can stand representing him to speak over this territory and I pray for you. Do you believe in prophecy? Is that all right? So, Reverend Godwin, please come, sir. Just two, three minutes so that you will pray for me. When you pray for me, 
I will invite these great, great vessels of the nation and of the gospel to just speak that word and then I will just pray and we're done. Thank you, Father. Um, if we still sit there, please let's stand to our feet by the message of God. What a season, what a time, what an hour, what a moment. The Bible says, No man take this honor upon himself. For he that is called of God, as was Aaron, anytime the calling is there, the equipment is there. Anytime the calling is there, the weapon of manifestation and the weapon for manifestation is there. Anytime the calling is there, there are legions of angels that are released to bear witness and command the manifestation of that which God has deposited. In the life of the called man of God, we give God praise for a season like this, and we thank God for adding to us a vessel like you. We honor and love you, sir. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to stretch forth your hands towards God's servant here and say, Father, back this calling with your armor in a higher dimension, in a higher level. At a higher realm of operation, back the calling with your honor. Any calling that lacks the honor faces reproach. Increase your honor upon the life of your servant. For no man take this honor upon himself. But he that is called of God, as was Aaron, let the honor that backs the calling be made manifest right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that and lingri pado shetaliado ilamana gaziza and legade zila brendoja ilabaragadeja ilakata engli pado zelebedoja ilengri manadeja ilakego zoma minada and liga do zelipada zeliparatasha. Jesus mighty name I have prayed and this I shall follow them that believe one of the things that made the ministry of Jesus to stand that was the manifestation of the signs and wonders when Jesus was done teaching they said this one does not speak like other men they speak like one sent by God Lord we ask for the manifestation of the higher dimension of the miraculous the manifestation of a higher dimension of power upon the life of your son and your servant in the name of Jesus when he has spoken there were signs and wonders taking place in the house the Bible said the blind they saw the lame they walked out the dead were brought back to life we ask for the manifestation of power of signs of wonders of the miraculous in the name of jesus let that grace be deposited in the higher dimension let that oil be released at the greater level and linger below and break is a day and liga rapata and leave a lack of time and make the zuba leggy he ramana na na shit he shall have a he break to shit he la para da da he la para da 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 he higher dimension he higher dimension of power of signs of wonders practical instant immediate tangible manifestation of the miraculous let the grace rest on your son and on your servant Jesus stepped into a city and the Bible says everywhere were filled even to the doors the crowd was so much that the friends that came with the leprous person they didn't have access to step in they have to pull off the roof of the room where they were gathered because of the choked nature of the place 
where the carcass are there is a gathering where grace is there is the commanding of attention father what we saw here today what you're saying right now may it not diminish the power for attraction the grace for attention the oil that magnets the congregation let it increase upon the life of your son and your servant in the name of Jesus the light that magnets the power that pulls let it increase let it multiply upon the life of your servant lift up your voice as you begin to pray for the magnetic grace that power that pulls attention that power that commands attention generational attention transgenerational attention and live by Rakadesh in Lamano Tide in Laba in Lakadasia Lakatata and Lepre Gogoso in Lamana and live by Rakada and Solo Bade Shiada in Lamrakadasaya and live by Rakada and the name of Jesus Christ the hand for preservation the grace for protection let it increase and multiply upon your servant oh god baba keep him from evil eyes and make him unreachable by evil hands in the name of jesus begin to pray for him right now for the preservation power of god the protective grace of god the anointing to keep they are mighty for longevity. They are mighty for sound health and strong health. But the weight upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagle. Lord, we thank you for the strength of the eagle. We thank you for the strength of the horse. We thank you for the vitality and the courage of the lion. Let it rest upon your son and your servant. The name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Greater access to resources. Greater access to greater resources. All round resources. Let it be made available to your son and your servant, oh God. Lift up your voice as you begin to pray that prayer. Greater access to resources, human resources financial resources, material resources, spiritual resources, greater access, and lick again, and lean mamaya, and let bread go to so, in la baragada day, in la bragada siada, and lean baragada day, and let get the boy, thank you for me, in the name of Jesus Christ. Elijah speaking to Elisha, he said, if you see me when I am being taken, what you desire will rest upon you. God's servant, the apostle said, you will speak on behalf of your father by the message of God in all humility. One of the vessels that God has handed this territory over to by the message of God. And Apostle, I appreciate the recognition of that grace. I appreciate the recognition of that grace upon the life of my spiritual father, Dr. Pastor Paul and Nature, to be precise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I also believe that it's a vessel and a man that you will get in touch with if you've not done that yet by the message of God. We are privileged to have that servant of God as a blessing not just to the city but to the continent and beyond the continent by God's grace one of the voices in our time speaking to both demonic powers and the powers that be that one is a story of his own and is for another time that which you desire that he carries by mercy and the privilege of connection and also from proxy by that which he would have loved to do if he were to be present we demand and command 
they drop it right now in the name of Jesus father with all sense of humility and by virtue of the privilege of connectivity to my spiritual father Dr. Pastor Paul and Nancy whom your servant there demands that that just flows in the heat be dropped here I pray for the backing and the witnessing of the heavens I pray for the backing and the witness oh Lord God of your grace that as your servant apostle Joshua desires that that which your servant Dr. Pastor Paul and Nature carries Father drops here let it be 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 in the name of Jesus from this day we command the opening of the heavens we speak to the four corners of the earth we speak to the contents of the earth to yield to this grace answer to this calling and let the name and the name of the Lord alone be glorified forever in the name of God the Father in the name of God the Son and in the name of God the Holy Spirit in Jesus mighty name have we prayed let somebody shout that amen at the top of your voice God bless you real good in Jesus name wow hallelujah praise the name of the Lord now please listen we we're in very prophetic moments right now. I want you to pay attention. It is, it is truly a rare privilege. Um, I'm so sorry that we couldn't, uh, there are people, um, alumni and graduates of the uh, NIPS, the Nigerian Institute. I honor you, sorry we may not have that time. Um, there are several people, members of parliament, honorable members, Senate, there are just a few, a handful that we're aware of. I'm aware that there are some of you who declined coming to the front. We honor you wherever you are. You have come from several places. Praise the Lord. Um, um, but it's truly an honor um, for me and then for all of us to have this father and this veteran, one who has held the scepter in this nation to come and speak and prophesy. Listen, there are some of you, this is why God brought you here. There is a grace for governance and it does not just happen. So um, as the protocol leads him to just come and just speak a blessing, we are trusting God that God will do the new here. Are we together? The honor of being a one-time Senate president is an honor that you should not take for granted. Praise the Lord. We are using him as a point of contact to speak to the territory and to establish the fact that this territory, this region, this move will always remain a move of influence, not just spiritually speaking, but even to government. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome His Excellency. Is that the best you can do?
Father, our nation is bleeding. Your people are crying. Our institutions are broken down. The future appears bleak. But our hope is in you. Our hope is in you. Our trust is in you. And so, Lord, in Egypt, your people were oppressed. And when they cried unto you, you raised Moses. Father, now is the time. Father, in Israel, there was a failure of governance. When Saul failed you, you raised David. Lord, raise David. Raise your David over Nigeria. Raise your David over Nigeria. Raise your David over the 36 states. Raise your David over the local government. Locate your David amongst your children. Let your grace locate them. Amen. Let your grace strengthen them. Amen. Father, visions come from you. No man can of his own do it. Identify your David and vision him to lead your people out of this situation. Take glory, Lord. Take honor. Be magnified, Lord. For we pray in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please, may I invite Dr. Stanley? Yes, sir. God bless you. Please honor him. He's coming to speak over business people and those who are in business of all sorts. And truly, he's a man that God has helped. And we honor you for what you represent. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you, Apostle, for thank this you. great privilege. Father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord. Apostle, my father in the Lord, Pastor Dr. Paul in Nature says, a man cannot give what he does not have. He says, it takes a man that has been there to take you there. And by the mercies of God, I stand here as one that has been blessed by God. And I decree the same anointing that brought me from the back side and positioned me on the front side. I decree that same anointing be replicated in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that same direction that I got that directed me to the right path of destiny. I decree that young men and women who are trusting God for direction, I ask so oh Lord that you receive direction in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare all those that have what to do, I decree the same hand that rested upon our business, that made us, brought us from the backside and brought us to the front side, that same hand is resting upon the work of your hand in the name of Jesus. I eliminate confusion. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. Be thou glorified. Be thou magnified. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. I'd like us to please, very quickly, um, I just thought to do this. Um, I'm sure it may be a surprise for Honorable, please I may request you to come here. He's the first black man to be an honorable member in Poland. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, we, met, we met on a flight and Honestly, he's truly a humble man. To go to another land, he will represent the grace 
for influence even in a strange land. And I want him to come and just speak that decree. Is that all right? Yes. Doctor, sir, God bless you. Let's honor him. Please pay attention to these graces as you receive them. God bless you. Holy are you Lord God Almighty What is the land What is the land You are for taking me as a missionary to Poland and raising me in that nation. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy over these ones that are here that you shall shoot them as arrows into the nations. Father, you told us in years past that you are going to throw Nigerians shoot nigerians into the nations father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i decree and declare that this shall come to pass in jesus name grace unto you in jesus name amen thank you, thank you so much thank you sir very quickly please let me invite our father, Professor J.S. Murray, let's honor him. <laughs> Celebrate him as he comes. As he releases that anointing, please open up your heart, all of you connected to the academia, and receive by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. You know, there's knowledge that comes from the head. There's knowledge that comes from the heart. I wish I knew the one that comes from the heart earlier. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say I wish I knew the one that comes from the heart earlier. Praise the Lord. You see, I have to say this. So that we become mindful of what Apostle is releasing over us. Praise the Lord. You see, we are praying in an altar. You know, I see, you see, Apostle as a man who has sacrificed himself on the altar of God, consumed by a lot. And God is sending him as a light to drive out darkness from the universe. And it's planting what that belongs to heaven on earth. Praise the Lord. There is a knowledge I got to know late. You see, it comes from the heart. And when you are seated with people, you tell them what they bow to you. Are you hearing me very well? You see, by this knowledge that the Lord revealed to me of recent. I release it over you in the name of Jesus. I decree that sign on cars, sign on aeroplane, will be replaced by the cross because the wisdom will come from the church. 
In the name of Jesus. I, look, the, the knowledge that comes from the head now cease to operate in you. It will come from the heart. It will be directed by the Lord. The creator of the universe. I decree that every theory on earth will come from the church. I decree that every innovation on earth will come from the church. I decree that every Nobel Prize on earth will be received by the man in the church. Your eyes will not see the physical. But your eye will come from heaven. You will rewrite things that men have written. In the name of Jesus. Go and rule the world. Go and show signs. That our God is the creator of heaven and earth. In the name of Jesus. No more failure in the church. You see, when your grace comes, other grace will be separated by a hundred. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, it, it just occurred to me to do this. Um, sadly, we are not able to have her here, um, but we had a moment, and I was very humbled. She prayed for me this morning. Um, our mother, Mama Sarah Omako, even though she's not here physically, she wasn't able to make it, um, but... My biological mother is here, but I have, listen, 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 hold on. One of the blessings in my life is that I have so many mothers. My life is surrounded by and with intercessors. I don't know why they are largely women, mothers. For some of them is their covenant with God. They pray for me day and night. And one of these amazing mothers is in this place and truly she's a mother indeed. She's one of the women who um, she has watched the investment, the grace of God upon my life and she has been a major pillar, a major support and this for me is an opportunity to truly, truly honor her. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me call her to speak the blessing of a mother our mother, Mommy Ojela Day, please. Let's celebrate her as she comes. Protocol help her, please. Is this the best you can do? Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Jesus. Amen. Lord, we just want to thank you. Most high God, we worship you. Our everlasting Father, first of all, we thank you for this gift in apostle that you have given to us. We thank you, most high God, that you chose him for this assignment. We thank you that you helped him to give himself to the Lord. Lord, we pray that you will keep him for us. Amen. We pray, most high, that your anointing upon him will be multiplied. Amen. Father, we pray, just as so many graces has been released upon us tonight, Lord God Almighty, I pray, especially tonight on every woman, on every mother, on every lady, that the type of women that we read about in the Bible that did exploits for God, such graces will be released upon us all in the name of Jesus. Oh, we will stand to do great and mighty things for the Lord. The passion and the zeal of God will be made manifest upon our lives. 
Oh, we will seek no other person in our life, first of all, to live for God and to show forth his power in the name of Jesus. I decree tonight that the love of God will consume us, that the love of God will descend powerfully upon our lives. Oh, that the robe of righteousness will be seen in our lives. Wherever we go, Lord, people will see Christ in us. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that the vision you've given us tonight, we will be carriers to every area we go in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, we will not disappoint you. We will not fail you. We will not falter. We pray for all our men, the young men in our midst. They will be all that God expects them to be. They will be representative of God in their homes, in their schools, in their places of work, in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that the Almighty God will make us shine for his glory. In every family, in every area where we walk, everywhere we are found, the light of God will come and shine forth in the name of Jesus. Nigeria will be turned around for God in Jesus' name. Oh, our God is a turnaround God. We will go out from this place and turn this nation around in the name of Jesus. And the power of God will be made manifest. Father, we thank you. Ancient of days we are done. We thank you for the privilege of being your children. It's such an honor. We worship you, Lord, and we say thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm a product of many anointings and the speakings of men are very powerful because God hides his anointing, his grace in men. I'd like you to please <clears throat> be patient, we're almost done, but I, I just feel that it's important to at least just make this decree. This is our first night. This is the inaugural service. There should be proofs that you came. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to tell you with all due diligence, we have honored the fathers and the veterans in the land. <clears throat> we are not rebels. Praise the Lord. We have secured their prayer, their blessings, because we are sincere people, we are visionary people. One of the prayers that Bishop Abioye prayed for me is what I want to start with tonight to pray for you. He said the grace that makes ease, that makes things happen easily. Please, you don't have to kneel. And I know he prayed from the depth of his heart. In the name that is above all names that name Ebenezer let it speak over your life when mommy Sarah laid hands and prayed she made a statement and when we had the office she said something to me she said there is a grace for ease that is on our ministry. Same thing. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, hardship is not a good thing. Oh. Don't, don't ever embrace it. it. It can interrupt many useful things in your life. I pray that this grace that came from the throne routed through the, the patriarchs and the matriarchs in this city that makes for ease. I stretch my hands. May that grace rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The grace that brings encounters to a man. Please be sensitive and pray now. You don't have to bring anyone under the anointing outside. We don't have that time. But in the name of Jesus, I am praying. There is a grace that draws men and really helps them to see an unfolding of deep things in the spirit. I release that grace upon you now. Yeah. 
I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic and I declare I speak to the two lift gates of your destiny be open now 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 the Bible says and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah Paris Cobradicia and he overtook the chariots of Jezreel I want to release a grace for speed just help those under the anointing father by the grace of God I declare I don't know how it has been before now but I declare speed take that grace now speed in your life speed in your destiny help them please speed in your family overflows outside speed speed in the name of Jesus the Bible says and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon I prophesy to the north the south the east and the west everywhere the helpers of your destiny are positioned I command them to appear now please help them I command them to appear now because thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity the Bible says therefore God even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows I decree and declare the grace that distinguishes may that grace rest mightily upon you hallelujah I was preaching in Rogic and I please permit me to honor the woman of God pastor mrs. bimbo Ekweme. God bless you we truly honor you thank you apostle Goodhart couldn't make it he traveled but listen while I was preaching there at the conference I was studying and the Spirit of God told me to pray for the grace upon the people the grace for visibility believe me people of God let me tell you being gifted is one thing but there is a grace that gives you visibility the Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing there are many gifts listen some of you are in ministry you truly are gifted some of you are in business like Dr. Stanley prophesied over you, but it looks like the gate. And the revelation came from Acts chapter 12. That the Bible says how that they bound Peter and prayers were going on by the church. And the Bible says an angel came, loose his chain, brought him out of the first gate, out of the second gate. He says he came to an iron gate that opened up to the city. There is a gate that opens a man to the city. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare the gate that must be opened for your influence, for your gift, for your product to find expression. Receive that grace now. Hallelujah. The Bible says certain men came to David in the cave of Adullam even though they met him hiding they bound themselves with a covenant to help him that he must become king let me tell you this no matter how great you are your exploits is predicated on the quality of the people that believe in you and stand by you no matter how anointed you are the gift of men is a grace that God can bring faithful men faithful men father where are the people who must show up over someone's destiny someone's ministry wherever they are by the spirit we call them into your life now hallelujah listen it's one thing for people to believe you be conscious of what you are receiving but it's another thing for people to stand up 
and bless you. The Bible says God restored the captivity of Job. Job 42 verse 10. And it says his friends came and everybody came with a bag of money. When Saul met Samuel, he said on your way back you will find three men holding two loaves of bread. They will salute you and give it to you. There is a real grace for favor. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Exodus 3.21 And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. It shall come to pass that as you go, you shall not go empty. I decree and declare the kind of favor required to accelerate your life. I declare may that favor rest upon you. Whatever has destroyed your prayer life, that it has gone down. The grace to pray, the grace to fast, completely gone. Right now, fresh fire upon your altar. Fresh fire upon your altar. The grace to intercede, the grace to pray, the grace to wait upon the Lord, the grace to create changes in prayer. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, And Jacob dug a well, and the Philistines came and covered it. He dug another well, they covered it. He dug the third one, and they left him. He called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. There is a grace for territory where the, your portion in a land is kept and left for you. In the name of Jesus, wherever your portion is in this land, I stand in partnership with the grace upon the fathers in this land and I declare that you locate that which is yours. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, we're wrapping up. I want to pray for the grace that draws the ministry of the Holy Spirit to him. Listen, we are made by our fellowship with him. This one, there is a strong grace that will come on you. I want you to believe it. There is a grace, an embracing to wait, to stay until you are furnished, until you are made. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. From the front to the back, the left to the right, everyone who must carry this grace. Father, call people, call people into dimensions of intimacy. Call people. Receive that grace. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. It's a fire that is resting on you. Receive that grace. Seneteko shanakatazetias. Help them please receive that grace. The overflows outside receive that grace. You will never be the same. I release you with a hunger for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me pray the last prayer point for tonight. There is the spirit of revelation. Access. It's a fellowship into the mystery. You are called. It's not just something you study. You are called into the fellowship of this mystery. And as much as the Lord has shown us mercy and helped us, I stretch my hands. There are people who must drink of that grace. I stretch my hands. Access to depths, revelations of the Spirit. Carry that grace now. Carry that grace in the name of Jesus. Carry that grace in the name of Jesus. Carry that grace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyone here appointed to death, that death is following you, following your family members, I stand by the God of heaven, we declare it cancelled now. 
canceled now canceled now canceled now in the name of Jesus Christ praise the Lord now please listen just help those under the anointing if you are sick in your body just lay your hands there right now we have to pray you are sick in your body I apologize we may not have a time for we this is this is something that is ongoing so we have to respect time but I just want to speak over we cannot end the meeting without speaking over the sick help them please help them every spirit hear me my goodness I'm seeing chains this is what I'm seeing in the spirit chains in the name of Jesus anyone who is bound by any demonic force hear the word of the Lord I stand as one sent and I decree and declare my God I'm seeing fire rest on people I command those devils be gone now be gone now every strange spirit that is not of the Christ I release you from their influence now in the name of Jesus be healed now blood conditions be healed now bone conditions be healed now all kinds of abnormalities be healed now eye conditions be healed now for your loved ones who probably have contracted the COVID and you're trusting God for their healings I declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead healing for them now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus everything that did not work hitherto over your life and your destiny by the word of the Lord I declare return and watch it work now in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now please just keep standing I to request you will find out that there is a form there is a form that has been given Pastor Pete thank you thank you sir thank you so much sir everyone should every one of you you have this form we're, we're all first timers including me praise the Lord so please do us a favor this is what I want you to do um, whilst we prepare to share the grace the first half contains information about the ministry that is yours please take it for your own edification and then so that you can reach someone with it the second half would please request that you fill it legibly and then when you fill it legibly do well um, just drop it on your seat drop it and leave it there there will be people who will come and pick it up there will be please for our special guests let me plead as much as possible I'll plead that you are not in a hurry there will be just a, a very light reception just something to honor you at the rotunda so please the protocol as soon as we're sharing the grace please just lead our special guests just to the rotunda and then you have some time if you are yet to get this form just wave your hands please PR help help our people so that they can get this please be aware that the meetings are Sundays by five so next Sunday we're still here by the grace of God and hold on please let me say this please um, I apologize because of the COVID situation number one we plead that you come on time and then number two please as much as possible Please hold your face mask and so on and so forth so that we'll do our best to be as compliant. I know it's not easy, but we'll do our best. We're not rebels to government. We'll do our best to make sure that we continue to comply. Today was overwhelming, and I can imagine how it will be next week. So please do well to come early so that you can get a good seat next week. I want to truly appreciate everyone, every special guest of honor 
everyone who honored our coming and for you all our global family we truly honor you we appreciate you truly this is the beginning of a great move i want to appreciate my my dear friends there are people who have come pastor Joaquin, thank you pastor fred thank you jang fa is here thank you manasse the lord bless you and then captain balami the lord bless you and honor you sorry we did not have the time um, for everyone who was not honored please do not feel bad I love you with all my heart if we have to do that it will take some time but I must honor my friend my brother Pastor Pete Rock Sadiq thank you I love you thank you sincerely thank you for your humility in the name of Jesus so after the grace please do well to greet one another and please the security because of the security uh, and, and then the traffic so there's no stampede I plead with you just walk with what the security, the Peace Corps, um, FRSC, we have different people just helping to manage the crowd. Please allow those by the road to go out first so that those inside, if you go out, there's going to be a stampede. We don't want a, any casualty beyond what has been. So please just be patient. You don't have to rush out. Just allow those outside to move and then you have the opportunity to move. Uh, same thing with those with the vehicle. Please do well. The, the, the road service core are helping us to manage traffic so please just be patient as they direct you can we share the grace together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen the Lord bless you see you Sunday next week